funeral here, those of you who weren't here last week. We had a funeral, but it wasn't a, it wasn't a bad funeral. It wasn't a lost funeral. It was a funeral where people died to their old selves and they were resurrected anew in Jesus Christ. So the only person that cried at that funeral was the devil, amen? It was, it was really, really powerful. I know we were supposed to hand out certificates this morning. I do apologize. We will be handing them out next week. So all of you who were baptized last week, please be here next week so we can hand out the certificates to you. Those of you who have your Bibles, you can open them up to Luke chapter 17. I want to read from verse 11. And you'll see the title of the message this morning was, Be Made Whole. And funnily enough, my wife was in hospital this week. As you can see, she's not here this morning. She is well. Um, she's recovering. And, um, but I prepared part of my sermon in a hospital, funnily enough. And as I was preparing, the Lord said to me that he wanted me to preach this sermon specifically, that we can be made whole. But you know, last week we spoke about we need to get understanding and all our getting, we need to get some understanding. I wanna give us some understanding about a very crippling disease that the Bible speaks about this morning that I wanna enlighten you about, but I wanna show you how God uses the worst to bring out the best, amen? Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem, this is Jesus, that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee, then he entered into a certain village there met him 10 men who were lepers, who stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that they went and they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned with a loud voice glorifying God. And he fell down at his feet giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, where were the other 10 that were cleansed? But, were, but, we, but where, were there only nine? Were there not any found who returned to give thanks and glory to God except for this foreigner? And he said to him, arise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you whole. Your faith has made you healed. It says whole in the King James Version. In the Greek, the word is sozo, to be made whole. Whole is to be unbroken or undamaged. In an undamaged state, in one piece, if you will, complete and restored, Nothing missing, I always, when we pray, we pray shalom over people. It means nothing missing, nothing lacking, and nothing broken. That is to be made whole, and that is to be whole. Now, you see, what happens in life is the enemy comes to break us down, doesn't he? To break pieces off of us, to make us incomplete, to make us pieces of our former selves. I'm believing this morning that God is gonna make some people whole in this place. I'm believing for some restoration. Do you know that God's in the restoration business? Do you know that God, Jesus was a carpenter. You know what do carpenters do a lot of times? Yes, they make new stuff, but they restore old stuff too. So he's a creator and he's a restorer. And it's very important this morning that we understand what leprosy was. And I wanna show you what sin and leprosy actually has in common. Sin and leprosy have a lot in common. Sin does something to people, and leprosy does something to people. There were 10 lepers, and they were all suffering from the same disease. They were all facing a tragic death. When you got leprosy, in this, in this day and age, there is medicine for leprosy. If you, if you had to get leprosy, there's medicine that they could give you that would stop the leprosy, but it would not heal the damage that was already done. They were all literally watching a part of their body be eaten away. They all had to bury a part of themselves on a daily basis. 
And it gets worse and worse as it progresses. And as it enters into its final stages, the outward extremities literally begin to fall off. If you, if you got leprosy, literally your ears would fall off. Your eyes, your eyes would, be, would, be, would be eaten away. Your nose would be eaten away. You, they would lose fingers. They would lose hands. They would lose entire limbs. And they would have to literally go and bury pieces of themselves on a daily basis. Nothing was spared. Leprosy was a horrible disease. You were an outcast from your family. You were an outcast from the public. Your life, ladies and gentlemen, was so to say over. You had no hopes for tomorrow. You couldn't dream about things that you could do because you were literally falling apart. You couldn't have aspirations. You, you literally became, uh, we walked past the garage um, the other night and there was a beggar sitting on the floor. And he sits at the door. And, and you can see, I'm, I'm, I was standing on the outside and I was watching people walk past him. The, it's like he's not there. Some people will walk past, because he greets everybody because he's trying to get your attention. He's trying to, he's trying to survive. He literally stays up the road and he, and he lives in a, in a concrete pipe. This guy. He's, he's dirty. You don't actually want to touch him. It's almost, I could say today, that it, he might as well have had leprosy. Because nobody wants to touch him, nobody wants to go near him. You see people walk past him and they're like, and my little son Levi says, Dad, can we give him some money? I was like, sure, let's, let's give him some money. So I gave Levi the change that we got at the till and he walks up to him and he gives him the money and the guy's like, thank you, bless you. He didn't have leprosy, but he might as well have had you see, when you become a beggar like that, you, might, you, you, you actually start scavenging. You become like a wild animal. You, you don't get invited to places anymore. You don't get invited to parties and, and special occasions. You have no contact with the outside world. You become, they became, people with leprosy literally became people of the night. They would cover themselves so they could walk in and amongst people just so that they could be in society. But if somebody had to see that they had leprosy, they would literally cast them out and throw them out of town. There was a fear attached to them that what they carried would affect the people around about them. They were ostracized, they were excluded, they were ridiculed, and they were rejected. And the thing is with leprosy, it starts with a speck in your eye. You don't even see it. But then it begins to spread. And it starts as a speck and nobody notices it. You don't even notice it. But if it's not dealt with, it begins to consume. One of the interesting things about leprosy is the first thing it does is it kills your nerve endings so that you can't feel. Isn't that what sin has in common? When you sin the first time, you're like, yeah, man, I shouldn't have done that. Wow, that, why did, why did I do it? And you beat yourself up. And then a few days later, the same temptation comes or whatever it may be, that thing that you're sinning into, it comes again and you do it again and, yeah, you know, it's not so bad. I can, you, you start to lose the feeling. You used to feel convicted you didn't actually like doing what you were doing, but because you had lost the feelings, when sin takes hold of your life, you lose the feelings. You lose your natural affections. You lose your emotions towards things. Sin makes you lose everything. You begin to bury parts of who you used to be. The victim feels no pain. They don't even know that they're infected. Some of these people with leprosy, they could stand on something. I mean, if you're gonna go and stand on a thorn, you're gonna feel it, right? You stand on a, on a piece of, we, 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 we do steel work. If you stand on a shaving, you're gonna know all about it. There's, they lose their feelings so that when they stand on something, it'll get infected and they don't even know that it's infected. So there's these 10 people with leprosy and they look, they look like a horror movie. 
They looked like there was a horror movie once called The Hills Have Eyes. When I, when I was preparing, I, I thought of those. There was like these crazy hillbilly people, and it was really gross. But that's what they looked like. They were, I, want, I need you guys to imagine this this morning quickly. They have no ears. They have no noses. It's all been eaten away. Their lips have been eaten away. You can see their gums and their teeth. They look like mummies. They've been wrapped up in bandages. And they stand afar off, the Scripture says, Because they weren't allowed to go near anybody. Remember, they were ostracized. They weren't allowed to go near anybody. They knew that when they came near somebody, they were going to be chased off, literally with pitchforks and torches. They would be chased away. But they see Jesus, and from afar off, they shout. Somewhere, somehow, when those 10 lepers were standing afar off, they knew that they could approach Jesus. Somewhere, somehow, they heard something. They heard something. Maybe they heard that Jesus touches the untouchable. Because it says in Matthew 8 and verse 1 to 3, when he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. This is Jesus. And behold, a leper. This is a different story about a leper. There was one leper. And a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand and he touched him saying, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately leprosy was cleansed. Maybe they said to one another, this Jesus, this Jesus, he touches the untouchable. He is no respecter of persons. Maybe they said, he is the great physician. He is the great healer. We're not told, but something drew them to Jesus. They heard something. So these guys, you can imagine, they're looking all messed up. They're looking gross and horrible. And they approach Jesus. And it says in Luke 17 and verse 3, And they lifted up their voices and they said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. They called out, Son of David, have mercy on us. And Jesus heard their cry. Can I, can I tell you this morning that when you cry out to Jesus... Jesus hears your cry. I want you to understand something about the story this morning. When you're at your worst, when you cry out to Jesus, you need to understand that He hears you. When you cry out in desperation, you need to understand that He hears you. When you cry out in brokenness and surrender, you need to understand that He hears you. When you yield completely to Him, when you give everything, And you lay it down, just as we sang that song, at the feet of Jesus. When you're full of who you are, there's no space for anything else. We need to yield to our own plans, our own will, and our own emotions. We have to empty ourselves in order to be filled by Jesus. When we do that, when we come and we are yielded vessels before Him, That's when things shift. That's when things turn around. That's when things change. When the leper came and he fell down at the feet of Jesus, worshiping him. I thought about this. He's sick. His limbs have fallen off. The oak's probably got like a few fingers missing and like a foot missing and he doesn't even have crutches, probably got a stick. And he comes and he falls down at the feet of Jesus, worshiping him. What do you worship for if everything's been taken away from you? What do you come and, and, and fall at the feet of Jesus for when, when, when everything's been taken away? You've lost your eyesight, you've lost your hearing, you've lost your fingers, you've lost limbs, but yet you fall down at the feet of Jesus and you worship Him. This guy's been battered and he's been bruised. He's been to Timbuktu and back. He's been through everything. Everything has been taken away from him. Do you think he falls at the feet of Jesus, worshiping, saying, thank you, Lord, that I can't walk anymore? Thank you, Lord, that my ears have fallen off. Thank you, Lord, that my my, my legs are gone. See, the thing is, when he fell down at the feet of Jesus, when we shift from worshiping God Not what he can do for us, but because of who he is, everything changes. 
So many of us, I'm guilty of it too. We wake up in the morning. Thank you, Lord, for what you have done. Thank you, Lord. And then we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then we start asking God, Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Yes, and there's parts that we need to ask and there's time for us to ask and there's time for us to petition. But he says, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. When we start our prayer, lay down and sit down at the feet of Jesus and exalt him for who he is. Start to cry out the names of God and worship Him in spirit and in truth before you start asking. Because you see, the thing is, this guy had everything to ask for, yet he falls down at the feet of Jesus and he worships Him. And you know, some of us will be we're like, you know, I'll worship God when. I'll worship God if. When God checks my to-do list boxes, then I'll worship him. You see, we need to come and give Jesus worship in spite of everything. God, you ha I haven't seen that dream come into fulfillment yet, but I'm gonna worship you. God, those contracts haven't come through yet, but I'm gonna worship you. God, my children aren't where they're supposed to be yet, but I'm gonna worship you. God, my marriage isn't where it's supposed to be, but I am going to worship you in spite of my situation, in spite of my circumstances, in spite of what I see. I'm gonna worship you. It needs to be like, Lord, if you never answer those prayers. Lord, if that, if maybe you've got some, uh, some outrageous prayer, and you know we need to have some outrageous prayers. You need to have like a dream board and a, a vision board where you put some crazy stuff up on there. You need to put like a yacht and a, you know these yachts that go to Monaco, those, yeah, one of those. Put it on, why not? God can do all things because he owns the cattle on a thousand hills. Hey, Julie, as Julie would say, my dad's got a lot of cows. He's got more cows than you can imagine. He has got the provision stored up for you and he says that I will give it to you, pressed down, shaken together and running over in the name of Jesus. All we need to do is walk in obedience to God, fall down at his feet in spite of everything and worship him. And all these things will be added unto you, he says. In Jesus' name, I'm gonna worship you. We need to give God some sloppy worship. It's the best word I could think of. We need to give God some leper worship. It doesn't sound so good, but y'all, this is what I'm trying to say. You know, in, the, in, 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 in spite of everything, in spite of everything going wrong and, and the world being against you at moments and in seasons of your life, it's in those moments where we can come and fall at the feet of Jesus and cry out to him and he hears you and he is faithful to fulfill his word. That's when we need to lie prostrate on the floor. We need to be yielded. We need to be surrendered. We need to stand in awe of God because he is great and he is mighty to be praised. We need to decree that for the rest of our lives, we will worship God in spite of what we can get from him. Amen? Amen. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for He is good. It says in Psalm 136, for His mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods for His mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords for His mercy endures forever. His mercy is sufficient for each and every one of us. Even though your life isn't perfect, you say, God, I'm gonna worship you anyway. Even though your breakthrough hasn't come, you say, God, I'm gonna worship you anyway. I haven't seen the answer, but I will worship you anyway. In spite of where I am, in spite of what I can see, I'm gonna worship you anyway. And you know why we worship him? Because he is worthy. He, God is worthy. He's worthy. He is the lamb that was slain. You need to say, Lord, it didn't go to plan. God, it hasn't worked out yet. Lord, it's not supposed to be like this. But God, I know that you have a plan for my life. When we shift our focus to that, God will answer our prayers. Maybe you're sitting here this morning and you're like, God, I'm not healed yet. 
but I'm going to worship you for who you are. Can God cannot resist this kind of worship. You know, instead of standing here on a Sunday morning stiff-necked with our hands at our sides like, sol- like tin soldiers, maybe we need to not worry about who's around about us. Maybe we need to worry about who are we worshiping to. You know, he's the only entity in any book that when you worship him, he comes alive that he'll literally come and meet you. That when you open your Bible, it's the only book in the entire world that when you open your Bible, that the author of the Bible literally comes to speak to you. It's the only book in the entire world. When we worship him, he will invade your life. He will invade your situation. He will invade every area that you're struggling in. And Jesus said in Luke 17 and verse 14, so when he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. Guys, this is an issue that counselors can't fix. What I'm speaking about this morning is something that psychologists can't fix, psychiatrists can't fix. You can't fix it. Nothing wrong with any of these, and I'm not downgrading any of these things. We need counselors, we need psychologists, we need all of these things. But there is only one place where certain situations can get fixed. You need to go to the temple. You need to get into the house of God. You need to get yourself under some anointed preaching in a church that is spirit-filled because there is something that you can do When things are falling apart and you see decay all around about you, when you see bits of your life, bits of your dreams being buried, when pieces of your life seem to be falling away, when you seem to be having a daily funeral of your hopes and your dreams, there is only one place that you can go to be made whole, and that's the temple. There's healing in the house of the Lord. There is comfort and joy and restoration in the house of God. I said it earlier, Jesus is in the restoration business, but even better, he's in the resurrection business. And every dead thing in your life, I don't care how dead it is. I don't care how far gone it is. You may be sitting there this morning, you're like, never, it can't, it is beyond repair, God resurrects dead things. That's what he does. So as soon as you can start believing that, maybe you will start to see the manifestation thereof in your life. See, the problem is, you know what blocks the supernatural? Our own minds. Because we're all intellectual beings, right? Hopefully. Amen. (laughs) But we try to reason everything, don't we? We try to reason everything. And because of our reason, our reason will block the supernatural in our lives. When we open up ourselves and say, Lord, I wanna see the supernatural, I read about it, I read about it, I read about miracles, signs and wonders, healings, the resurrection of the dead. Why not believe it? Because if you believe it, you'll see it. What you think about, you'll bring about. What you think about enough will begin to manifest in your life. If I keep saying my marriage is, guess what? My marriage is gonna be. Whatever you surround yourself with, whatever you fill yourself with, soon enough you will become that thing. If I smoke three boxes of cigarettes a day, I used to smoke cigarettes a long time ago. Thank you, Jesus, that I was set free. Could have been angry. You could have struggled to get into the car, you know, when you kick the kids and, no, not really, don't do that. But, but sometimes we feel like that, don't we? Nothing's going according to plan. The kids don't want to get dressed. And, and, and the, the, it's like, go brush your teeth. Go brush, oh, this is my house. Go brush your teeth. Did you brush your teeth? No. It's like two minutes to church. Did you brush? No. I, they go to school in the morning. Guys, did you brush your teeth? Would you, would you put cream on your legs? Because their legs are like white because they need, they need cream. And that, I'm like, guys, did you put cream on your legs? No. Did you brush your teeth? No. I'm like, come on. You know, we get frustrated then, don't we? 
And then we, we, we come in and we even like, on a, but why? Why do I have? And you know what God's doing? He's building your capacity. That's what it does. It, it actually just builds our capacity. I heard, a, I heard a sermon the other day about, and the guy spoke about an orange. And, and he said, you know, if you take an orange and you squeeze that orange, only orange juice is ever going to come out of the orange, nothing else. You're never going to get apple juice out of an orange. You're never going to get watermelon juice. You're never going to get Coke out of an orange. Only orange juice will ever come out. So why is it that when we are pressed in our lives, that things come out? Because you've got to remember that some, it's something on the inside. That when you're pressed, when things go wrong, whatever's on the inside is going to come out, just like that orange. And that's why I'm preaching about being made whole today. Because if you can come here and you can lay everything down at the feet of Jesus, God is faithful and He can heal you, He can restore you, He can make you whole, and He will fill you with His Spirit. And I'm not saying it's gonna be perfect and you're gonna react perfectly every minute of every day. You're still gonna lose your temper. We've had issues this morning. I felt like taking that computer and just, you know when those old TVs, anyone? Anyone, you remember those old TVs and when they didn't work, you just hit the thing? I felt like that this morning. I was gonna hit some devices at the back there to try and get them working because we're not live streaming and everything's just going wrong and I'm like, in Jesus' name. And, and, and you know, you start, because it's on the inside. But then you, I, I, I had to get to myself to a point where I just said, Lord, there's nothing I can do. Jesus is in your hands. Everybody, it'll, what will be, will be, and whatever people will hear, will be what they will hear. And I was just like, Lord, Jesus, take the wheel. In Jesus' name. But you see, we just need to keep on going. We need to keep on fighting. We need to keep on pressing. We need to keep on swimming. We need, just need to keep on keeping on. You keep coming. You keep coming, you keep coming to church. And the enemy, where the enemy thought that he had you, guess what, Jesus steps in and Jesus says, no way, he's not on my watch because you are mine in Jesus' name. Amen, let me get back to my story. So those nine lepers, they left and Jesus healed them. So you can imagine that they run home and those sores stopped bleeding. They were healed, remember? So, so the sores stopped bleeding, the ooze, the pus, Sorry, I know it's, I know, I know it's not, not, not a nice image, but I gotta, I gotta, we have to get the, the crutch of it. The, the pus stops running and the, the blood stops oozing and all the grossness is gone. And they're healed and they run back to their families, back to their homes. They run back to their husbands and their wives. They, they can embrace one another again. You can, you can imagine the scene, children running to fathers, husbands running to wives. They've been healed. But one out of the 10, he turned around. He had a turnaround moment. Can I tell you that God's giving you a turnaround moment this morning? He went back and he fell at the feet of Jesus and he began to worship at his feet and something happened to him that never happened to the other nine. The other nine were healed, they ran back, they were healed. But miracles happen at the feet of Jesus. None of them got healed from their leprosy, but only one of them was made whole. The one that returned and he began to worship at the feet of Jesus, the one that began to worship, he was restored completely. I want you to understand that the word whole means to be complete. Remember I said it, to be made whole. If he lost his fingers, his fingers grew back. If he lost his limbs, his limbs grew back. He was made whole. He was fully restored. That's what the word means. So the other nine went back. They still had the scars of what they had been through. They still carried the weight of what they had been through. So many of us walk around every minute of every day carrying what we have been through with us. But at the feet of Jesus, you can be made whole. You know, I'm full of tattoos. I got tattoos everywhere. Because of a life I used to live. I did one on my back, got about halfway, and the Holy Spirit convicted me and said, that's it, no more. I was like, oh, it doesn't look so lacquer, but yeah. That's it. God said, no more. 
and I had to be obedient. But I went, I went somewhere once, quick story, I'll get back to my story. And a pastor came up to me, a bit of a religious pastor, I'm not speaking bad about him at all, love the guy. But he, he came up to me, he's like, yo, these tattoos, I need to lay my hands on them and you, you have to repent, you have to repent, you have to repent. It's Afrikaans with me. You have to repent of these tattoos. And I'm like, well, you don't think I've repented already. The drug addict, you don't see him walking around with the needles in his arms. You don't see the bags of cocaine in his pockets falling out all the time. You don't see all the Rizla and all the weed and everything that a, that a, that a, that a, 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 a marrow, what, what do you call it, the Dacha addict has smoked. You don't see every bottle that an alcoholic has drank being dragged behind him. But some of us carry the scars of our past. And I want to tell you this morning that at the feet of Jesus, you can be made whole and you can be restored. That there won't be any signs. There won't be any smell. Wait, let me not jump ahead of myself because we're going to get to the smell part. <laughs> In a good way. These, these nine guys went home, but they still looked like what they had been through. The one guy went home and he didn't even look the same. Because he went back and he worshiped Jesus. He was made whole. As he worshiped Jesus, his nose grew back, his fingers grew back, everything grew back. You remember the story in Ezekiel in the Valley of Dry Bones, how when he spoke to the bones, it all grew back. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you will live and you will know that I am the Lord. When they fell at the feet of Jesus, when he fell at the feet of Jesus, specifically, and God said, be made whole. When he spoke over him, he was made whole. God wants to bring dead things in your life back to life. God wants to resurrect dead dreams, dead relationships, dead marriages, dead businesses. Be made whole this morning in the name of Jesus. But the key is that we come to him with leper worship. This is what worship can do for you. This is what learning to worship can do for each and every one of you. Guys, we're, we're not perfect. Those of us that you see us standing up here, we're not perfect. We're far from it. We've been through some stuff. Some of us still bear the scars of our past. Some of us have been, addiction, have been addicted. We've been addicts. We've done the wrong things. We've said the wrong things countless times. Some of us stand up here having lost more than you ever could think or imagine. But just because we're here on a Sunday morning looking sharp and dressed for success doesn't mean that we haven't been through some stuff. You know, there's people that stand up here that have been through divorce. There's people that have been through bankruptcy. There's people that have been abused. There's some people that have been taken advantage of. We've been through some stuff. But it's only because we fall down at the feet of Jesus that we're still standing here today. It's not that we can't relate. It's not that we can't relate. The truth is that, that there is a reason that we lift up our hands. You know, some of you, maybe you're new to Jesus, maybe, you, maybe you've only met him for the first time recently, and you, you know, you see some of us standing here, and our, and, our, and our arms are raised up to the heavens, but there's a reason for that, because God has delivered us from some stuff. That's why we jump around, that's why we clap, that's why we cry, that's why we fall on our knees and on our faces, that's why we jump and we dance and we sing. And it's only because Jesus can fix those certain things in our lives and we can be made whole in Jesus' name. Just because we don't look like what we've been through doesn't mean we've been through it. Doesn't mean we haven't been through it, amen? Truth is that behind every person that God is using, every person that God uses, they've been through some stuff. Every person that God is using, I think if you had to hear their testimonies and hear their stories, they'd send, 
that sent some chills down your spine. But God's done a restoration in their lives. And they don't look like they've been made whole, they've been renewed, and they've been clothed. And only God can do that. Amen? You know, Jesus can take people that have been down in the dumps, people have been down and out, ones that have been through every sort of sorrow, divorce, heartbreak, abuse. Jesus can take you and make you whole. Jesus is our healer. He's everything we need. He alone has triumphed. That's what the words of that song was. He alone has triumphed over sickness and disease. When that one leper went home, the one that Jesus made whole, when he got back to his parents, do you remember they, they, they only knew him the way that they had seen him before? How many of you have gone back and met some old mates or gone to a reunion and they're like, what happened to you? Because eh? Jesus changes you. They must have been like, Johnny, is it you? Is it really you? You were all messed up and you were falling apart. You were broken and defeated. Can it really be you? You know, there's some of you sitting here this morning and God has touched you. And if some of those old friends see you this morning, or they see you a week from now that you haven't seen in years, they're gonna look at you this morning and they're gonna be like, Malcolm, is that you? Fafa, is that you? Ara, is that you? Khart, is, is, is that really you? I know, I've met some friends and they're like, they, they, they tell me, they're like, dude, you changed. I'm like, amen. <laughs> amen, I changed. Amen, because I'm not the man I used to be. Because God has done something in me and he has restored me and he has made me whole. And you know, some of those friends, this is the sad part, they're still where they were 20 years ago. Where I saw them 20 years ago, they're still doing the same freaking thing. They're still stuck in that same rut doing the same thing. They haven't moved, they haven't changed. And I'm like, God, I'm so grateful that I'm not where I used to be because you're taking me somewhere that I don't even, Lord, I know that you have stored up so much for every person under the sound of my voice. Guys, do not let those dreams die. I want everybody, can I challenge you this? If you do not have a dream board, where's, I know you've got one. I kept on thinking of you, amen. Have a dream board. Put something on there that is, that is crazy. That's so crazy. We, we said this at the beginning of the year. Believe God for something that is impossible unless God steps in. Believe for something that is so crazy, so out there, so impossible in your current situation and circumstance that unless God steps in, it's impossible. Believe God and put something on a board. Because remember, without a vision, everything will perish. Without a vision, without a goal, without a destination, where are you going? You've got to dream for something. You've got to dream for better. You've got to say, God, I know the plans that you have for me. Plans to give me a hope and a future. He's got plans for each and every one of your lives. And don't limit yourself. Don't limit yourself. You know, the only limit that you have is you. You can be a billionaire, and I'm gonna say it, and I'm not prosperity preaching this morning. So do not come and send me a message in the week saying, oh, Pastor Greg, you did prosperity preaching again on Sunday. No, God wants to give you everything that this book promises. It's in here. I'm not making it up. God can do it for each and every one of you. But the problem is you don't believe it. You don't believe what that book says. You don't believe that you can be healed. You don't believe that you can be restored. You don't believe that you can have everything that he says you can have. I want you to tell the person next to you, you changed. Tell them. Even if they haven't, you tell them right now, you tell them you've changed. Husbands, tell your wife, just do it, I know. Yeah, you can give me the flack, blame it on me. Tell them you've changed. Tell them you've changed. 
Because now, guess what? You've planted a seed. Woo! And what does the seed do? The seed grows. In Jesus' name, you can change. In Jesus' name. I'm running out of time. I need to hurry up. Daniel 3, the story of Nebuchadnezzar. I'll try to run through it quite quickly. You guys know the story. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they don't want to bow down. And the king says, I'm going to throw you guys into the fire. And he makes the fire seven times hotter, and they get thrown into the fire. And even the guys that are throwing them into the fire, they get like incinerated because the fire is so hot. It's seven times hotter than it's supposed to be. And King Nebuchadnezzar stands up, and he, and he walks up to the door, and he, and he looks inside, and He's like, didn't we throw three oaks in there? And he sees a fourth man in the fire. Can I tell you that God is with you in whatever you are going through? And that what's crazy is I, I read this and he, and he says in verse 25, look, he answered, I see four men loosed. Put it, can you put it up there quickly? Look, he answered, I see four men loose. What loose them? What, what loose, you, the fire loose them. I want you to just, 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 just think about that quickly. The fire loose them. They were thrown in bound, defeated, ensnared, trapped, hopeless, discouraged. But when they were thrown into the fire, all the fire did was set them free. They were loosed in the fire and instead of seeing three men in the fire, he sees a fourth man in the fire and he says, it looks like the Son of God, because three plus fire equals four. Amen. If you want to get Jesus, go through the fire. If you want to get closer to Jesus, go through the fire. The Bible says he's the man with fire in his eyes. What does fire do? It refines. It burns off. You think of gold, it, it burns off, fire burns off the old, it refines, it gets rid of the rubbish. When you go through the fire, sometimes the only way to get to Jesus and to get a fresh anointing is to go through the fire. I know we all wanna, we all wanna have these, these moments and we wanna come to spiritual churches and we wanna come up to the front and you want the elders to come and Slop you on the forehead and you go flying backwards and receive a new mantle and, and, and you get touched and the anointing hits you and, you, and you, you're dripping with oil and we all want those moments. But can I tell you something this morning, ladies and gentlemen, that those moments happen at the feet of Jesus. I'm not saying they don't happen. Yes, don't get me wrong. They do happen. When we lay hands on you, God can do it. I can't do anything because it's not my might, not my power, but by his spirit, says the Lord. It's only what God can do, but God can meet you right there where you are. And the key is that if you will give Him worship, if you will surrender at His feet, He will answer your prayers. He will anoint you. He will set you free. He will pour out oil over you in the name of Jesus. Guys, can I tell you quickly, there's no shortcuts to Jesus. Sometimes, you're gonna to have to go through the fire. Because fire refines and the best comes out. Maybe God wants to put you through some things in your life to get the best out of you. Ooh, that, that's not so comfortable, is it though? Especially if you're carrying some stuff, you're like, no. Because you, you know that you might have to let it go. But God wants to get those things out of you so that he can get the best out of you. In the name of Jesus, it's costly. He wants to get those things out so that only the best of you will remain. But I love what it says in the rest of that verse in Daniel 6. If you go to verse 27, and the satraps, administrators, governors, and the king's counselors gathered together, and they saw these men whose bodies the fire had no power the hair of their head was not singed, nor were their garments affected, nor did they even smell of the fire that they had went through. They didn't even smell like what they went through. He removed the scent. He will change you. You won't look like what God will make you whole. When you worship God, He will restore you. You will, woo. Hold on, let me just get my bearings here. 
You will have nothing missing, nothing lacking, and nothing broken in the name of Jesus. You see, some of us, we've been through some stuff. You've been through some trials, some heartbreak, some disappointment, some betrayal, some pain. But God is the repairer of the breach. He is the restorer. The devil wants you to go through your life smelling and looking like what you've been through, but Jesus makes you whole and you won't smell or look like what you've been through or where you've come from. Jesus will restore your faith, your trust, and your soul. It says in Psalm 23 and verse 3, He restores your soul and He will overflow in every area of your life. Last story. God doesn't want you to look like what you've been through. The prodigal son in Luke 15, he climbs over the fence of the pig pen and he, and he must have been like, I've had enough of this. I've had enough of this life. I've had enough of this. I've had enough of eating dirt. I've had enough of eating pig's food. I've had enough of this filthy life. Can I challenge you this morning? When are you gonna say enough is enough? Why not now? If not now, then when? If not you, then who? If you don't change the status quo, who will? If you don't make the decision for your family, who will? You have a choice. You're at a crossroads this morning. Which path will you take? Narrow is the gate that leads to life and wide is the gate that leads to destruction. Which gate will you choose? Narrow is the way. Jesus' way is the narrow way. It's the narrow way. It's not going to be easy, but it'll be worth it. Can I say that again? It's not going to be easy, but it'll be worth it. Somebody asked me the other day, how's it to be a pastor? I said, it's the most fulfilling thing you could ever do is serve Jesus. And I'm not just talking about being a pastor. You can serve in any way. It's the most fulfilling thing you will ever do. But at the same time, with tears in my eyes, I want to say it's the hardest thing I've ever done. Because I have to crucify my flesh every day. Because I'm fleshly. I'm a human being. I'm just like each and every one of you. I'm not perfect. But I wake up in the morning and I choose to put God first. I choose to take up my cross daily. I choose to say no to the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. I choose daily to make a decision. And guess what, guys? I'm not just doing it for me. I'm doing it for my children and my children's children. In Jesus' name. When will you say this far and no further? He went to his father, the prodigal son, and when he was still a far way off, his father saw him and he was filled with compassion for him. And he ran out to his son and he threw his arms around him and he kissed him from afar. Why did his dad run out? Why didn't his dad let him come into the village? Because if he had come into the village, everybody would have seen what he had been through. But he ran out to him. His dad ran out to him. He embraced him, he kissed him, and he covered him. Guys, I wanna tell you this morning, it doesn't matter what you have been through. When you come to Jesus, He will cover you, He will restore you, and you will not look like what you have been through. He will cover you with a robe of righteousness because that is what He does. He is a good, good Father. God is in the redemption business, and it doesn't matter how badly you messed up, He will restore it all. God will restore everything that the enemy stole. You know, it says in Romans eleven twenty nine, 29, for the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance. God doesn't just write people off just because you messed up. You don't need to run away from God. If you will let him, he will put a robe of righteousness on you. He will wash you clean. He will put new shoes on your feet. He will put provision in your hand and wisdom in your mind. When you come home, 
You won't even look like you were in the pig pen. You won't smell like it. You'll look like a businessman. You'll, be look, you'll look like you're, you're worth a million bucks. You, you, you won't look like everything you lost. You'll look like the opposite of it. In Jesus' name. God can turn things around for each and every one of you this morning. He can do a, you can allow him to do a 180 in your life. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but he will have the light of life. He will be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. If you will let him, you can choose to follow him today. You can choose to give him everything this morning. Okay, I've got one more, one more. Can I give you one more? One more, I can't leave this one out. There was this guy. He was possessed with many demons. The Bible says he had a legion of demons. They actually called him legion. If you Google how many a legion is, it's five to 6,000. Can you, we, we, we worry about people that have got one demon. Imagine having five to 6,000 demons in you. This guy's possessed. He has these demons living inside of him. It says in Mark 5 and verse three, he had his dwelling among the tombs and no one could bind him, not even with chains because he had so often been bound with shackles and chains and the chains had been pulled apart by him and the shackles broken into pieces, neither could anyone tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountain and in the tombs, crying out. And remember, he was cutting himself with stones. He, were, he literally looked like what he was going through, right? He was ripping himself apart, it was bad, it was gruesome, it was horrible. But Jesus came ashore in the region of the Gadarenes with this guy who had 5,000 demons. And it says in Mark 5 and verse 6, when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and he worshiped him. He fell at the feet of Jesus and he worshiped him. And 5,000 demons could not stop him from worshiping Jesus. Can I ask you this morning, what? is stopping you. What is stopping you? Stop standing and, and not giving Jesus everything. Jesus came to set the captives free, to give you freedom. Nothing can stop you. Nothing should stop you from praising Him this morning. Praise your way through those thoughts. Praise your way through those hard times. Praise your way through those insecurities, through those difficulties, through those trials and those challenges. When you're faced with opposition, fall at the feet of Jesus and praise Him. Praise your way through and say, I'm going through. I will not be held back. I will not be bound. I will kneel at the feet of Jesus and my worship will attract the rain. Get down on your knees and worship Him. As you worship Him, as you fall at His feet, Jesus is saying to you this morning, be made whole in Jesus' name. Did you know that deity and devils, deity and devils cannot live in the same place. As you worship Him, demons will leave. As you worship Him, addiction will fall away. Those old thought patterns will be replaced with new neural pathways that you create because you do not go down the old paths anymore. How do you create a new neural pathway? Can you imagine, all of you, most of us, have walked through a felt before. You know, a little, you know those little one spur, the one little path in a, in a field where the grass is really long on either side. Those are some of our neural pathways in our brains. And we're so used to doing things certain ways that we always have the same outcome at the end of the path at the same time. But how do you create a new, a new neural pathway? You have to change the direction. And is it gonna be easy? No, because there's no path. But as you walk that new path and you do it daily and you make it a habit and you are consistent about doing certain things in your life, those of you who train in the gym, you'll know that you can't go to gym once a week and expect to have a bodybuilder's body. You can't go to gym once a week. And like some of us, we did the warrior race not so long ago and you, we ran and we literally were out of breath and, and, and I could feel that I don't run enough. 
but you have to do things consistently in order to have the breakthrough at the end. So new neural pathways are formed by you changing the way that you do certain things in your life. Be the change. Make a decision. Kneel at the feet of Jesus and be made whole in Jesus' name. Anger, animosity, hurt, and jealousy, all those things can be broken off of you this morning. You can say to them, get out in the name of Jesus. And God is faithful. Nothing can stop you when you give all your praise to Jesus. Amen. Amen. We don't get good to get God. We get God to get good. Amen. Give Him everything this morning. We need to give Him sloppy worship. We need to, we need to lay everything at the feet of Jesus. Out of all that we've been through, out of everything that you have gone through, everything the enemy threw at you to take you out, God is saying to you this morning that if you will fall at my feet, I will make you whole. Do you believe it? He says your faith has made you well. You need to believe it to see it. You know there's that saying, seeing is believing. You need to see it. It's, it's a, I actually, I, hold on, that's actually really true. It's true. Because if I wanna see the manifestation of something, I need to see it. That's why you need the goals. That's why you need to say, Lord, I can be free. Lord, I will be free. If you see it and you believe it, what's stopping you from getting it in Jesus' name? Because God says you can. Amen? Amen. Can we give God a praise? It says in Joel 2 and 25, so I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten. The crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust. My great army 